uh, dystopian trailer there, but uh, I'm a co-founder of Creative AI, and we're reimagining design for the creative age. And we're also redefining what it means to be in stealth. At the same time, the clicker doesn't work. Augmented design. <laughs> so can I have a new clicker? Um, There we go, thank you. So we apply AI into creative industries where we're taking AI tech and bringing the workflows of creative agencies to life and uh, trying to help them jump 10 years into the future without disrupting them too much. And we're trying to do that under the radar as much as possible. But in the evenings, the whole team turns into musicians and visual artists and poets and comedians. And we do this because it's what we love doing. And it's fun and it's messy. And it's, sometimes it's beautiful. And we, we do it because it defines who we are. And we love trying to find the balance between software that's available today and things that actually don't exist yet. And we often bump up against the limitations of these tools and these techniques. And it's uh, often frustrating. So tools have taken over the creative process. Tools are um, define the way we build things and create things. And as Stefan says on our team, we create our tools, and then our tools format us. And well, nobody likes to be formatted. That's not a good thing, especially if the designs for the computer interfaces are there from the 60s, and the software has been designed from the 80s. That's a long time of being set and defined in a small little box that uh, it specifies who you are. So as a team uh, and as a company, we want to break out of that and take back creativity from the machines. We want to make these decisions all over again. We're asking ourselves, what does it really mean to be creative? What does it mean to be human? And how can we define interfaces or on our own terms and not on the terms of the machines? So what we found in this process is that everything we're doing is completely wrong. Like the workplace is the least creative environment that you could possibly imagine. Like sitting in a seat for eight to 10 hours a day in front of a screen that hypnotizes you with a keyboard and a mouse is the worst interface you could possibly imagine. And we couldn't make it any less creative. All the creative work happens elsewhere. And what's worse is that everyone seems to have forgotten what it means to be human. There are, um, many things that you will be able to do that computers will never be able to do. The tools have formatted us so much that we identify with Photoshop, We're like a little version of Photoshop with legs. That's, that's the self-worth and the self-identity of many of us out there. And we believe that humans will have a, an incredible impact going forward. Even in a world with AI, it will be a co-creation. So we're basically redesigning the whole uh, thing with more humanist principles. We're taking these ideas of self-determination theory and uh, these ideas that what makes you uh, more creative is autonomy, mastery, and purpose. And we're building these principles into our software. And it's not just things that we're doing, but also things that we'd like to see from other teams out there as well. So the first principle is empowerment. And the software that's out there today, or the concepts that are out there today, are actually the opposite of empowering. This is basically a representation of a deep learning pipeline. You have data that comes in at one end and stuff that comes out at the other end. And we have human-shaped holes at regular stages where this person's annotating data, and this person's is labeling information, and this person's cleaning data. And it's a very industrial age mindset. And it's the opposite of empowering, and it's the opposite of creative. At the other end of the scale, we have very complex software. The sort of information age is bombarding us with uh, information from trackers and devices and cameras. And uh, we have control over everything, like small sliders and tick boxes. And this is also the opposite of creative, because when you have too much choice, the cognitive overload is just too much to handle for most people. So we want to put creators back in control. We want to put you in charge of the system, of the AI. We don't want uh, this pipeline to be controlling you. It is about you. And for us, that means thinking of AI as an instrument that you can pick up, and you can use it, and you can play with it, you can perform, you can uh, do amazingly creative things with it, and then put it down once you're done, and it doesn't rule your life, it doesn't control you. And then we build up tools in a uh, DIY fashion, so building blocks uh, that you build up one by one. And this is the best way to make people more creative, giving them agency and empowering them to build their own tools. Because if they're solving creative problems, nobody else can build that tool for them, because by definition, it is a creative problem. And when people build up their tools themselves, we can make automation a design decision. They can 
dance back and forth between automation and augmentation and figuring out what is best for their particular problem at hand. I'd like to go for a run and then let the system figure out 20 different designs for me and then come back later and see which ones are the best ones. So expressiveness is the second thing that we're putting into our software, the set of principles. The current software today requires a PhD and a manual to basically understand what's going on. And even then, most software has a glass ceiling. Uh, it's built by software engineers that have uh, that put limitations on the software by the way it's built, and you can't really go beyond that. And what's worse is that AI machine learning algorithms are often no easier to understand either. It's very difficult to see what's going on inside the neural network. It's this sort of black box that you really can't get into very easily. So instead, what we're doing is thinking of it as a language of creativity. Instead of it being this big black box neural network, we want to build a, a set of patterns, a set of properties, a set of principles, a symbols that you can assemble and combine together to understand visual design, to understand music, to understand poetry, to understand writing and art. And when you start doing this, it makes the system self-explanatory. You can see exactly what pattern breaks down into other patterns. You can go inside and dig in and see how it works and how it proceeds. And that also makes it user extensible. You can build patterns on top of each other, create new symbols and give them labels, and it becomes your own vocabulary, your own language of creativity, which you can share with your team. And it helps you understand who you are as a creator, but it also uh, helps you communicate with your team and you're within your organization or with, other, with your clients outside uh, how exactly you express yourself in form of design. Which brings us to collaboration, and this is the final component of sort of humanist creative software. Today, collaborative environments are that like, people sit next to each other, but they don't really collaborate. It's a stressful work environment, and it's in these environments are the least creative. When you're sitting in front of a screen for eight hours a day, it is uh, this the worst possible environment for creativity. And even when you go outside of these environments, technology is now dominating and absorbing our attention. And we're losing those moments of boredom, which are key for being creative. So even outside of the workplace, the technology is making us less creative. And the collaboration no longer happens in the ways that, that uh, are empowering us. So we want to redefine these interfaces in a more human-friendly way. I want to be able to scribble things on a piece of paper and have the system know what that means. I want to be able to use my offices, project things on the wall, and use everything in a very tactile way. I want to be able to go for a walk in the forest and then just call in and say, hey, I have this crazy idea, and have the system figure that out for me. And thanks to AI, we can do these things, computer vision, natural language recognition, tools that understand us. Instead of the burden of the learning cliff being on me, the system should work to collaborate with me and try to understand me, how I operate. And we can also then think of AI as a collaborator that is coaching. I want to learn more about visual design. I want to learn more about creating music. I want to learn more about creating poetry. And there are experts in AI that will teach me throughout this process and guide me. But it's not so much about redefining my relationship with the system, but also with other people that are also collaborating with these AI coaches and these AI experts. And it becomes this global community sharing concepts and processes and recipes and patterns. So I'm not going to show you a product demo. I'm not going to sell anything to you. I just want to conclude with this idea. If you're going to be around in the future, and we're going to have machines in the future, how do we design for the interaction between you and the machine? And you have a choice. Do you want well, the kind of industrial age mindset where AI is in charge? It's a conveyor belt, and you have this human-shaped hole, and you fit that role. It's an easy role to fill. It's easy. You can show up to work at 9 o'clock and uh, leave at 5, and then you're done. And that's probably what Wall Street wants. Uh, or do you want to be in this dis dysfunctional office setting where it's, in fact, also the opposite of creative, where um, yeah, things happen, but you're being bombarded with information and high stress and high, uh, well, supposedly productivity, but the soul is gone. And we've decided we don't want that. We want to build a more mindful and creative set of software. And we want to take back the responsibility. And we're calling this the creative age. And I'm not going to lie to you, it's the most difficult thing that we've done as a company. And it will probably be the most difficult thing that you will do if, if this is something that resonates with you. It's difficult to build companies and teams like this. And going forward, it's worth it. We think of our team now as a band where individual team members come together and they do perform and uh, 
break up and then go and solve different problems for different deadlines, different milestones, different uh, presentations that need to be prepared. So it is tough, and your organizations will have to change, but the alternative sucks. So this is where we're going, and we're hoping that uh, we can convince enough of you to come and join us and work with us, because it doesn't have to be the dystopian future that is in the slush trailer. It could be a utopian future, but that is basically going to have to be your decision whether you want this or not. And well, we've decided where we're going, and if you'd like to collaborate with us, then we'd love to hear from you, and uh, you know where to find us. Thank you very much.